DxO has just announced the release of DxO Pure Raw 4. If you're unfamiliar with DxO Pure Raw, it optimizes raw files by processing them into images or DNG files using key DxO technologies. If you want to maximize your image quality, DxO Pure Raw has some great tools, and in this video, I'll walk you through what's new in version 4. Let's start by looking at the standalone version of Pure Raw. If you're an existing Pure Raw user, this interface will immediately look familiar. But there's a change that I want you to notice to one of the buttons. In Pure Raw 3, we had an Add to Queue button. This allowed you to batch up raw files and add them to a processing queue. But in version 4, the button is gone. Now don't worry, the processing queue is still there, but the button is being replaced by a new Process with Preview option. When we click this, we see a completely new screen where we can preview the effect of our settings. This previously wasn't possible in Pure Raw, and you needed to process your raw files in order to check the effect of settings. Now we have a default split screen preview, which we can also magnify to inspect areas of the image in detail. If I turn off the lens and vignette correction, you can immediately see their effect on this image. This makes it easy to understand what effect each adjustment has and the best settings to use. Next, let's look at the processing methods, because there's a new Deep Prime XD2 method which replaces the original XD option. This handles the critical demosaicing of the RAW file and removes image noise. My understanding is that the new method has been designed to better extract detail from areas of heavy image noise, especially in the shadows. Having tested it on a few of my own high ISO images, I think there may be a marginal improvement compared to XD. What's disappointing though is that XD2 currently isn't available for the Fuji Xtrans RAW files. I understand that DxO is working on this and will make it available as a free minor release once it's ready. Now let me show you another improvement which I am pleased to see. If you look below the processing methods, there's an advanced heading with additional adjustment sliders. The sliders that you see in this section depend on which processing method you have selected. These allow you to fine tune the demosaicing and noise removal settings for each image. For example, we might want to reduce the strength of the luminance noise reduction applied by the software. And, at the same time, we could also try to extract additional detail from the RAW files. If you're a DxO Photolab user, you may recognize these sliders as they're already available in Photolab 7. My experience has been that they are useful, and if you have a demanding high ISO file that's causing problems, they can work very well. Now let's return to the subject of image quality. This example image was captured at ISO 1600 using a micro four thirds camera in low light conditions. Here's a comparison of a small section of the image magnified at 200%. The version of the image on the left was processed using Deep Prime XD, whilst the image on the right is the raw file unprocessed. As you can see, there's a lot of noise in the original image which Deep Prime has then removed quite well. Now let's compare this with Deep Prime XD2. Here, the image on the left initially appears sharper and, surprisingly, is the original Deep Prime XD method. The new XD2 method doesn't appear as sharp or as detailed, so what's going on? The answer to that is that DxO has re-engineered the lens softness correction that's applied in Pure Raw. A criticism in the past has been that Pure Raw over sharpens some RAW files and even creates halos in high contrast areas. It's certainly a problem that I've seen with my Micro Four Thirds RAW files. To illustrate the effect more clearly, let's magnify this section of the RAW file up to 300%. Now we can see the halos around the leaves in the images on the left, but not in the image on the right. Not only that, but we can also make out more detail in the shadows in the background. This does indeed suggest that XD2 is producing a superior result that appears much more natural. Now you might be wondering what the point of all this pixel peeping at 300% is, and we won't see this detail when the image is printed. But actually, 
you do see the effect of these changes when you print the image, and on some subjects it shows up more than others. Images like this one that I shot in Dubai can easily appear over sharpened with halos around high contrast edges. But when you process these with Pure or 4, the results appear much more natural. Now let's talk about another new feature in the Process with Preview screen, which is file renaming. Using this, we can automatically rename the files produced by PureRaw, and indeed this was available in PureRaw 3. Here we see a drop down containing four options. For example, I can select the original file name with the process method appended. Then below this, we see a preview of the file name that PureRaw will produce. If these templates don't meet your needs though, you can click the Edit option. This opens the new Advanced Batch Renaming dialog where we can create our own templates for renaming files. For example, I can add fixed text to indicate the version of PureRaw that was used. I can also add something called tokens to the file name, which have variable pieces of information. These are arranged under three headings, and when selected, we can see the tokens in the drop down. When we've defined a new custom renaming template, we can save it as a preset for future use. Let's switch to Lightroom next, where we can access PureRaw 4 as a Lightroom plugin. There are two ways to do this. The first is using the File menu, where you can come down to the Plugin Extras section. We then see the PureRaw 4 section, where there are two options. Previously, we only had a process option, but now we have the new process with preview option we looked at earlier. The other alternative is to right click on the image and then select the export menu. Here we then see the two pure or options that we saw earlier. Now let's switch again to the finder extension, which is the third workflow you can use with pure or. If you're a Windows PC user, you have the same features in the Windows Explorer. Here we see my Mac Finder application with a folder containing raw files selected. When I right click on one of the files, we then see a Finder pop-up menu. This contains several pure raw processing options to select from. These are available because a pure raw Finder extension was installed when I installed pure raw. When I move my mouse pointer over one of the options, we see the different file formats we can select. This is a very quick and easy way to process raw files. You can even select and process multiple files like this. Which brings me on to another new feature, the Pure Raw widget. This lives in my Mac toolbar at the top of the screen. If it detects a new drive or a memory card being added to my system, it pops up with a message asking if I would like to open Pure Raw. Also, when I'm processing a batch of images, the widget shows the progress of the batch. I suspect DxO might add additional features to this widget in the future. Now to the question of cost. I understand the full license costs £109 or $119 and the same in Euros. If you have an earlier version of Pure Raw, an upgrade license costs £69 or $79 and the same in Euros. One question that's been asked in the past about Pure Raw is whether you need it if you already have DxO Photo Lab. The answer to that depends. PureRaw has some great workflow features, as well as some quality enhancements that are not yet available in Photolab. As I personally use Lightroom though to manage my files, I can see the advantage of using the PureRaw workflows. When I've tried to manage without PureRaw, I found I missed some of its features. But if you already have DxO Photo Lab, you can reproduce much of the PureRaw quality, as I explained in this video. It's a great one to watch next if you want to compare the two. Thanks for watching today, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you soon for another video.